Okay, this lesson is going to be on the thickness planer. We usually just call it the planer, but it's called the thickness planer. And that's what it does, is it controls the thickness of the wood. Now, you could take a board that was totally rough and run it through this machine, but it's not going to flatten the board. The thickness planer cannot make the board flat. All it does is copy one side. This is very similar to the joiner, and the joiner has a table, actually two tables, with a cutter head in between, and the, as the board goes through, it cuts the bottom of the board. On the thickness planer, it's set up a little different. We have a table, but the cutter head is above the table, so when the board goes in, the surface that's laying down does not get cut. It's the surface on top that gets that you cut off the top of, and it's basically copying whatever is on the bottom. So you want to start off with a board that has a good face. So we plane the bottoms of these boards so that they're flat. So when we put these through the planer, that flat face is going to lay pretty flat on that table as the planer takes wood off the top. So that's how the planer works. All right. Um, there's nothing dangerous about running a rough board that's totally rough on both sides through the planer. It's not going to feed very well, and it's also not going to make the board flat. It will make it smooth, and it'll give you the thickness that you want, but typically you also want the board to be flat, so that's why we have to go to the joiner first. So we do one face on the joiner. The second face is going to happen here on the planer. All right. There, again, there is a handout that goes with this machine, this lesson. All right. And if we'll start off at the top on the handout. It's talking about the purpose of the machine is to plane one face parallel to another face and also to reduce the board's thickness to whatever you want it to be when you're done. Okay, so this does two things. Aside from making one face parallel to the other, it's also reducing the thickness to your desired finish thickness. Um, this machine, again, cannot flatten a warp board. I'll tell you that right there. Some working capacities for the machine. Okay. The most you can take off on this machine is twice what the joiner can. The joiner's maximum depth of cut is 1 16th. This is 1 8th. It's a much bigger machine. There's a big Gigunda motor in there, and it can take off quite a bit. An eighth of an inch is a lot. Now, if you have a thickness planer at home, like a nice DeWalt 12 inch planer or something like that, it won't take anywhere near an eighth. You'll have to look at that machine capacity. I would be surprised if it took off even a 16th. A 16th is even a lot for a machine that size. Um, but this will do up to an eighth, all right? Now you'll notice on the machine we have written down 1 16th per pass. That's a recommended depth of cut. So I recommend you take off a 16th at a time. It may less likely to chip and cause problems. But the machine can do up to an eighth if you have a lot of wood to take off. If you have a thick board that you want to plane down fairly thin, you can do a few passes at an eighth, and then when you get near the desired thickness, finish up with a few 16th inch passes. We're not taking off a whole lot, so we'll probably just do a 16th every time. Okay. So again, that's the most you take off in one pass. The shortest board is just like the joiner, nothing shorter than 12 inches. Now this machine has an automatic feeding system in it. It's got rollers in there, so when you put the board in, the machine will actually grab it and, and pull the board through. On the joiner, you were the feeding system, you pushed it through with the push sticks. But here, you're going to put it in, the machine will grab it and pull it through. The in-feed roller and the out-feed roller are 12 inches apart. So if the board is only 10 inches long, it's going to leave the in-feed roller and not have gotten to the out-feed roller, and it'll just sit in there. So you want the boards to be at least a foot long. And then the widest that this machine can handle is 24 inches. This is a 24-inch planer. This is a big machine, um, probably the biggest you'll ever see, um, which is nice. Like Again, like, like the DeWalt machine that I was talking about before that you could buy at Home Depot. Those are nice planers, but they usually don't get any bigger than 12 inches. You can find 15 and 16 inch planers, but again, they start getting expensive. Um, but this is a 24 inch planer, just like the joiner. That's an eight inch joiner that's talking about the maximum width. This is a 24 inch planer. That's its maximum width as well. Okay. The maximum length on a planer has to do with your room that it's in. So if, if I've got 16 feet to the back wall, I can run a 16-foot board through here, as well as I've got 16 feet on the other side as well. Usually a planer is set up in the middle of a shop like it is in our room, so that you have room on either end for the board to go in and come out the other side without hitting something. Okay? So that's the size of this machine. So the length is not determined, the maximum length there isn't any, except for the room size, but the maximum width is 24, the shortest le um, length is 12, and the maximum depth of cut is an eighth of an inch. And again, let's take a look at the safety rules. Um, those five same standard safety rules that we talked about in all the other machines still apply, same, you know, like um, wearing safety glasses, proper dress, horseplay, 
uh, focused on what you're doing, all of those things still matter. Um, don't plane boards with drops of dry glue on them or dirt or farm material or loose knots. One of the worst things for a planer is dry glue. Let's say I glued several boards together and after you get the gluing done, you have that little ridge of dried glue drops. Scrape those off, please, because if you run those through there, when those knives come down and hit into the dry glue, it puts little nicks in the knife and every board after that is going to have a burn mark or a ridge or something where the knife didn't cut properly and, it, and that's something you're going to have to sand out later which makes a lot more work. So scrape off any dry glue, obviously make sure there's no dirt or anything on the, on the board. Um, we don't plane any boards with nails or anything like that in them of course. And any knots, again, just like the joiner, if they look loose, like they might have, be a problem, might break out when it goes through the machine, come and see me and we'll take a look at it because um, we don't want to run that through there either. Um, never lower the table with a board in the machine and the machine not running or even coasting. This could cause them a dangerous kickback. And what's, what I'm talking about here is we, once we adjust this to the right height, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, let's simulate this board going through. So as the board goes through, the rollers grab the board and pull it through. All right? It's just like you, again, pushing with push sticks. If I was to lower the table, with the machine running, that's like letting go of the board. And the cutter head is spinning this way, and it's going to kick the board back out of here like a torpedo. All right? Um, so that's very dangerous. So if the board gets stuck or there's a problem, turn the machine off and let it stop coasting. It'll coast for a while. It'll coast for 30 seconds a minute. So you may have to be patient and wait until it completely stops spinning. And then once it stops spinning, then you can lower the table to take the board out and find out what the problem was. But never, never, never lower the table with the machine running. That's a, that's a pretty big safety concern. The, the danger of cutting your fingers off on this machine are pretty low because you'd have to be pretty stupid to stick your fingers all the way in to where the cutter head is to cut them off. Okay. Um, the biggest hazard on this machine is actually a crush hazard, which is going to be one of the safety rules coming up. Um, or having the board kick out of the machine like we were just talking about. So you never want to lower the table to allow that to happen. Okay. The other thing is, never look into the machine while it's running. That would be similar to looking in down the barrel of a loaded shotgun. All right? If something ever hit the cutter head, let's say a knot hit the cutter head and it shattered, it would come out of there like buckshot. And if your face is in front of it, it's going to embed itself into your face, which would not be good. So never look into the, into the machine with the cutter head spinning, All right, whether the power was on or not. Okay? Again, wait till it completely stops lower the table, then look in there and see what the heck's going on, but not with it running. Um, number five talks about that crush hazard that I just mentioned. It says, keep your hands outside the machine. The biggest hazard on a planer is getting your fingers squashed. All right? Don't reach under the guards to clear the stock that's stuck. So let's say that the board was going through, and again, let me lower the table to simulate what could be happening. Let's say the board's going through and it gets stuck right here. It's very tempting to stick your fingers in here and push the board in. That's very dangerous. That's like sticking your hand in the lion's mouth. Don't do that, okay? Don't allow your fingers to get between the board or any part of the table where they could get pinched. I'll pick another board here. So, for example, if I'm running the board through, I don't want to have my fingers between the table and the board because when those rollers engage, they're pushing the board flat against the table, and if your fingers are in between there, they're going to get squashed. The springs that push these rollers down are huge and the pressure is quite a bit, so you do not want to be holding onto the board over the table. Always hold onto the board out here beyond the table, and that way when the board gets up to the table, it'll naturally pull it right out of your hands, and there's no chance of your fingers getting stuck in between there, okay? Um, I also don't like to have my fingers on the top. There is a little bit of a space there that your fingers could get pinched um, as well on the top. In another spot, not quite as dangerous, but still hurts, is sometimes when the board's going in, if it goes a little bit crooked, and sometimes that'll happen, it continues to move straight, and right here, it could hit the board. So if you try to grab it to straighten it, and in the process, it's moving forward, it could pinch your finger. It's not going to cut your finger off, but it's going to hurt like the Dickens. You may end up with a purple fingernail for a while. But don't grab it around the corner. If you want to, grab it back here to straighten it, but don't wrap your hand around it just for that reason. Okay. So again, the crush hazard, underneath, on top, or on either side, and in place where it's going to get pinched between something. Okay. Um, 
So that's as far as a crush hazard goes. Again, never stick your hand inside the machine. Let me get the board out from the other side before I forget about it. There we go. Okay, next thing, the operator. What does the operator stand when he's running this machine? Well, on any machine, the operator should be near the controls. All right. Now the danger zone, let's talk about that first. The danger zone in the machine, just like the joiner, is in line with the table. So the cutter head, which is right in here, let's take a look at that for a second. Here's the cutter head. This thing spins around and it cuts on the bottom side and the chips come out of here and go up this chute. But um, it's turning and it's pushing backwards that way. So the most dangerous place on this machine is in line with the empty table. Now, something could go out the outfit table, but it's more, way more likely to come out this way. So this is considered the danger zone right here. And the most dangerous point in time is when you first start it, because you're assuming there's nothing in the machine. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time there isn't. But let's say a board ran through there and a knot fell out as it came through, and you didn't know it was in there, and it was close to the cutter head, and then someone starts the machine up, and the suction from the sawdust collector pulls that knot up into the cutter head, that could come flying out at that point in time. So especially when you go to start it, make sure no one's right in line with the MP tape. All right? um, occasionally you have to step in front of it to operate the machine, but by then it's already running and you know it's that initial startup that's the most dangerous point in time. So stay out of the danger zone. So the operator doesn't want to necessarily stand in the danger zone. He wants to stand off the left near the controls. Okay? So here are all the controls that operate the machine. Right? So let's just talk about what they are for a minute. So first of all, we have a couple of things on the table. This lever here is a lock, table lock. So I lift it up to unlock the table to make the adjustment. Once I get it where I want it, push it back down again. Now, lots of people will unlock it by pushing it way back here. I don't like to do that because the scale is underneath here and it's hard to read the scale. But to unlock the table, you only have to lift it up half an inch. That's all. all right? Just like that. This knob here, we have do not adjust. This adjusts a couple of table rollers which are in the table down inside of here. And we have that adjusted so that they're just a few thousands higher than the surface of the table. It helps the board feed a little better. If you change the adjustment on this, those table rollers can be too high or too low and affect how well or poorly the board feeds. So please don't change that. If you forget and you adjust that by accident, please come and tell me. I'm not going to yell at you but it gives me a chance to reset them back where they belong, right? But don't adjust this front knob here. Again, that's the table rollers. So this is the locking knob that you do adjust, you do use, but the table adjusting, table roller adjusting knob, please do not touch. Now, this machine actually has two motors in it. It has a very large motor, very powerful motor that runs the cutter head. And then also inside of there is a smaller motor that runs the rollers and also the table going up and down. You don't really hear that motor come on and off. It kind of comes on when the machine comes on. Um, and this black switch here actually controls that. And when you hit the start button, both machines come on. But that smaller motor is actually a two-speed motor. It has a fast and a slow speed to it. So um, just like the joiner, a slower feed gives you a better cut. So we usually leave it set at the slower feed rate, which we'll talk about in a second, um, which makes also the table adjusting go a little slower. Um, but if you want to change it to a fast feed, I switch this to the other side and it will give me the fast speed. The position in the middle is off. And the, if you look at the pointer on this, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's got two pointers, one on the top and one on the bottom, and it's got a set of numbers on the top and on the bottom. So what's, what's going on here is there's also a two-speed gearbox, and this back lever here controls the, the gearbox gears. So you have two you have a two-speed transmission and a two-speed motor, and out of that you get four speeds. So when it's in this position, you're looking at the bottom set of numbers, because that's one gear ratio for the gearbox. So that's 40 feet per minute. This is 20 feet per minute. Feet per minute is like miles per hour. The higher the number, the faster it goes. Um, that's what it's saying here, feet per minute. So 40 feet per minute is going to be a little bit faster than 20 feet per minute. So this is the slow motor speed. That's the fast motor speed. If I was to shift to the faster speed, I'm looking at the top set of numbers and the top of the pointer. So that's 60 feet per minute, again, the fast speed, or 30 feet per minute, a little bit slower speed, okay? So two gear, two gear speeds here and here, two motor speeds here and here, right? So that's how you get four speeds out of this thing. 
right? We typically leave it on the slowest speed all the time because it gives us the best cut. Again, I could go faster if I had a lot of wood to do. Let's say I had a stack of lumber here that I had a ton of cuts to make and I had a lot of, um, a lot of wood to remove. Let's say I had one inch lumber and I wanted to plane a whole stack down to half inch, take it off an eighth of a time, I'd be here for quite a while. So I could go to a faster speed. Yeah, my cut quality won't be so good, but when I get close to the end, when I get close to my half inch, then I slow it back down and finish it up at half inch at the slow speed, and then when I, that'll bring me down to my half inch and I'll have a nice cut. So that's what the purpose of that is, but rarely do we have a whole stack that we have to worry about that for. So almost always we leave it at the slowest speed just because it's easier. Um, you'll find that this gear shifter, it's not shifting real good right now, but off, shifts a little better with it running. And all of these adjustments can be with, made with the machine on or off. So this machine is very forgiving, on and off works. Um, the gears shift a little better with it on, but it doesn't matter, okay? Um, I can also change the table height with it on and off. Now, that brings me over here. We could take a, maybe a closer look at these two levers. This back lever that I was just operating is my gearbox for my transmission speeds here, fast and slow. Obviously, the turtle is the slow speed and the little bunny rabbit is the fast speed. This front lever is that raises and lowers the table automatically when it's running. Okay, it's not going to work it right now, but if I have a long way to go, let's say the person before me had the machine way open and I wanted to bring it down to an inch or something, um, I could use this to get the, the table up close to where I want. It's a little tricky to get it to stop exactly where you want, so that's what this large hand wheel is for. This, by turning this hand wheel, I can raise, raise and lower the table manually, and it's a lot easier to get to with the exact spot that you want. And both in both instances, I'm going to be looking around the corner here to the um, scale. The top of this wedge is what the, the set is. So if I turn this hand wheel, I can bring it right to an inch, for example, and that would be right there. I get it to an inch and then I would lock the table in position. So that's how I would adjust my table height. Um, usually, 90% of the time, I'm going to use the hand wheel. I don't usually use the automatic function unless I've got a long way to go, just because it's, it's takes a, you know, it's, it's quicker when it comes to that, but it's hard to get it to stop on the right spot. Um, plus, it has to be running. All right, so those are the controls, all right? And we talked about safety. So, well, we were talking about, we were talking about safety, we were talking about where the operator should stand. We talked about the controls, that's because that's what we were up to. Um, let's finish up the safety and we'll move on to operating the machine. All right, again, don't take off more than an eighth of an inch at a time. That's the maximum depth of cut. And again, that's a pretty heavy cut. But because this machine is so big, it can do it. Also, you don't want to take off less than a 30 second. And I'll do this when I run it in a minute. But um, the in-feed roller has ridges in it. It actually digs into the board just a little bit to pull it in. The out-feed roller is smooth because if it digs in, it's going to leave marks, right? But what happens is as it goes through, the cutter head is taking wood off, so it's going to cut off those marks. But after it leaves the cutter head, you don't want to make any new marks so the outfeed roller is smooth. So you got to take off at least that 30 second to take off those dents. And every once in a while somebody will forget to raise it and they'll run the board through a second time and it'll leave those dents and that's what they're from. So you got to take off at least the 30 second to get rid of the infeed roller marks. Um, the sawdust collector needs to be on all the time. In fact, before I forget, I'm going to open the blast gate. Um, once I turn the sawdust collector on, that will work. But do open the blast gate and turn on the sawdust collector when you use it. Um, the problem with the planer is the sawdust has to go up after it's cut and gravity kind of prevents that from happening. So um, having a sawdust collector on your planer is a big plus. Um, don't feed stack boards through a planer, all right? You would think, why would anybody do that? But you cannot do that. Don't put one board on top of the other. That's dangerous. One board could kick out. On our planer, you can put one board next to each other and you definitely can put one board right behind the other and they can touch and one can push the next one through, that's not a problem, okay? Any planer will do that. Ours has a special infeed roller that allows you to put boards side by side. If you have a smaller planer at home, it won't have that, so you probably should put them one, next to, one behind the other and not next to each other. But on our planer, you can, next to each other is fine, behind each other is fine, but just not one on top of each other. And not much of a reason why you want to do that anyway, but just, again, Never stack boards one on top of the other. Um, if the board being planed stops feeding, now this is a common occurrence. Let's simulate that, all right? We talked about this a minute ago, but um, if you're running the board through the machine 
and everything's going through hunky-dory and all of a sudden it stops. Well, if it's sticking out of the machine like this, you can push it. You can push it all the way up to here. And sometimes just a little shove is all it needs to get going again because it gets to one of those little table rollers and it just needs a little nudge to get it going again. Sometimes you have to push pretty hard. Um, if it's a humid day, sometimes just the moisture in the room and makes more friction on the table so it needs a little more help because it does have to slide across that table, right? But if it's in there like that, I do not want you sticking your fingers in there. What you could do is you could have another board of similar thickness, let's say you have more boards to plane, you can put one behind it to push it through and that's perfectly fine. Right now you can push on this board to push that one, okay? So that will work just fine, okay? Um, if the board is sticking out of the back, you certainly could grab it and pull it. And that's okay too. As long as the board is not inside the machine where you're going to be reaching your fingers in there, you can grab it, push it, or pull it through. Okay? Um, once the board has a good face on it, usually it feeds pretty good. But sometimes it gets a little finicky. We'll see how it's going to work for us today. Now, let's say you, you push the board through and you're pushing it, and then all the pushing in the world just doesn't let it go anywhere. So, like, let's say it stopped there and I'm pushing against it and it just won't go. All right? It's obviously hit something. Okay? The edge of the table is not continuous. Like if the board goes crooked and starts to ride along the edge, there are breaks in that edge. So if it falls into one of those openings, it's, it's not going to, all the pushing in the world isn't going to fix it. You're going to have to stop the machine, turn it off, let it completely stop. Then once it's stopped, lower the table, take it out, bring the table back up to where it was, and then run it again. So my advice is don't go real close to the edge. Give yourself a little, little bit of space because sometimes they, they wiggle just a little bit in the process of going through and it'll avoid that. The other thing I've seen happen is a piece of knot or something fall out and get stuck in the gap where the table rollers are and it gets in there and it prevents a stop that doesn't let the board go through. And again, you have to let the machine stop before you go in. If you have to reach all the way in there, unplug the machine so there's no chance of that cutter head coming on. Let's say there's something that got stuck down inside the machine. Lower the table enough so you can reach in there. Unplug it first. Lower the table all the way down and then you can reach in and get it. As long as it's unplugged, that's safe. And that's probably a good time to check with me too. Let me know what you're doing. <laughs> right? But um, that rarely, rarely, rarely happens. Usually that push is all it needs to get it going again. But occasionally it'll catch the edge and get stuck and you'll have to fix that. Okay. Um, a couple of things it says in the safety rules here, just to, to kind of go over this. Um, don't feed stacked boards, All right, we talked about that. If the board being plain stops feeding, try pushing the board. If it's not sticking out of the machine, use a piece of wood to push it through the same thickness um, to push it through, we just said that. If pushing does not work, turn off the machine and wait for the cutter head to completely stop spinning. Don't lower it while it's spinning, even coasting, because it, that's a dangerous kickback situation you create. Um, and again, it says it in big letters, do not lower the table or look into the machine while the cutter head is still spinning. Underline, bold letters, nice and big, don't ever do that. Obviously, very dangerous. Disconnect the machine from the power source before making repairs to touching the internal parts, as you would, again, on any machine. All right, so that's the safety on the machine. Not a real tough machine, but a couple of things to watch out for, especially that crush hazard. You don't want to get your fingers in it. All right, so let's, let's operate this machine, all right? So it says the first, and again, these things you all don't have to do in one particular order, but you do want to have the sawdust collector on. You can start the machine. I'm going to start the machine last just because of the noise factor, right? I'm going to adjust my feed rate, and I'm going to adjust the table height. So the feed rate, I want the slowest feed. So I've already got this at the slowest feed, 20 feet per minute on the turtle setting. So that's a good feed rate for what I want. And then my depth of cut is going to have to do with the thickness of the board. Now for that, I need a ruler. Let me go snag a ruler real quick. And I'm going to want to measure the thickest part of the board. All right. So when we ran this through the jointer, we took off the two edges, so it's going to be thinner near the edge. So I want to measure the thickest spot. And at the thickest spot, it's about 15 sixteenths. All right. Just a little under an inch. All right. And if I measured all of the boards, I'd probably come up with a similar measurement. So I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to take off a 16th. Now, if I was off a little bit and it was still a full inch, I'm still okay because it'll take off an eighth without a problem. Okay? So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set this to an inch. Now, you have to be able to do a little math in your head. And if you're not good at that, my suggestion is start off by putting the machine at the thickness of your board. All right? 
<clears throat> for example, my board was 15 16 so there's an inch. I'm going to come up to 15 16 right? So if I ran the board through now, it would not take anything off. Now, the thing about the scale on the planer is it tells you how thick the board's going to be when it comes out the other side. The scale on the joiner tells you how much is taking off. So I don't set this to a 16th because that's what I want to take off. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do the math in my head. I gotta say, okay, I got 15 sixteenths for a thickness. Subtract a, a sixteenth, that's uh, 14 sixteenths, which is really 7 eighths, which is where I ended up setting it. So again, my suggestion is, oh, I like to open it to an inch so I can see everything. Then I'm gonna say, okay, my board's 15 sixteenths, which is 1 16th less, so that's where it is now. And then I wanna take off a sixteenth, so I'm gonna raise it one more line. So each pass, I'm gonna raise it a line until I get to the thickness that I want. So that's going to lock that in place. I'm going to lock my table. All right. So I've got my speed set. I've got my depth of cut set. All right. And um, I'm going to have my last gate open. I'm going to start the sawdust collector. I have another button over here to do that. And then the big black button on the side here is to start it up. some work on the other side. So the rule is always put the worst side up. So before I send the next one through, I'm going to look her over and say, well, I'll do that side next on that one. A little bit of something there, but I got more roughness there, so I'll put that on. That side up on that one. So I'm going to raise it. I'm going to run one board through without raising it to show you what happens when you don't now I didn't raise it so nothing really came off but you can see the, the dents in it those are all from the infeed roller those normally would get planed off as you take it pass off so let's raise it like we're supposed to scrape off any hard glue, remember we always scrape glue off, and then we're going to come back and we'll, we have at least one more pass on each side so we can clean it up, and then um, we'll have a nice stripe and the surfaces of the wood will all be the same, right? If I plane this down to my final thickness and then try to do that, I would already be at my final thickness and I would have no room for, for cleanup. So that would be the reason. 
depends on the project you're doing. If you're not going to do anything like that, you can continue planning until you get to the thickness that you need. Right? So it just depends on the project you're working on. All right. Um, let's see if there's any other things to think about here. Um, when you're done, this has a fairly large glass gate. So close that up so that anybody using other machines has plenty of suction because the more glass gates open, the uh, less suction you have. And I think that's it. That's 